Today on Ask Austin Harley, we're going to be talking about authorized users, everything that I know I've gone through and some additional stuff that I've done some research on that I'm going to teach you today in today's credit hack review number four. So first things first, before we jump into this video, I have a demonstration in the back to explain what an authorized user is. I figured it'd be a lot easier, I mean, since you're coming to YouTube to learn anyway, you might as well look at something rather than just see me stand in front of a whiteboard. But anyways, if you already know what an authorized user, a cosigner, any of that stuff piggybacking is, you can just go ahead and skip ahead in the video. I don't know to what minute, I'll leave it in the description below. Anyways, let's jump into this. So. Being an authorized user is as simple as it sounds. It's actually exactly what it sounds like. You got your friend, you got your family, or whoever you're asking to become an authorized user for, you got your credit card, and then you got you. I always circled you so it's a lot easier to read. What this means is, let's just keep it simple. You go to your friend or you go to your uncle, your family, whoever you trust, whoever has supposedly good credit habits, and you ask them, hey, I don't have good credit habits. Can I become an authorized user to increase my score? That's the general concept. That holder of the credit card, the friend and family, is going to add you as a user in the account, not a cosigner, a user. It's actually completely different. And you're going to be able to spend money on that account. You can still make payments, but you're not legally responsible for that debt. Meaning the positive, hopefully all positive, credit habits of being on that card is going to be reported out to the three credit bureaus. Now this is where the gray area gets a little bit sketchy because you are not legally responsible for that debt. So what that means is you could go out, rack up the whole credit card and basically just disappear. It definitely has to be someone that you trust, someone that trusts you. And there's many different reasons to get into being an authorized user, and that's what we're going to go on in this video. But that's kind of a general overview of what an authorized user is. So first things first, now that you know what an authorized user actually is, let's go through some pros and cons of it. So first things first, some pros over here. Number one, it can increase your score. Increase your score. Isn't that what you wanted to watch this video about, right? But here, let's go through some gray area on that. So it can, huge keyword, can. The problem is, if that other person, your friend and family, decides to use this card uh, and max it out, not use it under 30%, just like my three golden rules in uh, my other videos that I have, then it's going to negatively affect your score, which is actually a huge con. I mean, that, you don't want to do that. But let's just say your friend or family is using their card perfectly hop in this side. One major con of being an authorized user is that apparently credit bureaus actually recognize you being an authorized user and not actually a co-signer and it carries less weight to the credit bureaus. So everything that gets reported out to the credit bureaus, your whole profile, your address, your utilization rate, uh, your inquiries, everything like that carries a different weight. So if you're an authorized user, it doesn't carry as heavy of a weight. But even on top of that, another fact is even Equifax is starting to recognize authorized users and in the long run on people's credit profiles, they're actually deleting some of that history. So it doesn't carry as much weight and it doesn't increase your score as fast as say having your own credit card or being a, a full out co-signer and carrying the responsibility of the debt. The second fact of being an authorized user is you're not able to make any changes to that account. You can't make any changes, you can't make any uh, requests, address changes, anything of that sort. Not really a con, but it's something worth noting. Basically, the whole concept of it is that you're supposed to just become an authorized user and let that person do whatever they want on that card and never use it. Because remember, you're using your credit to build it. You're not using your credit to use it. If they start using their card and go on this crazy spending habit, or maybe they have too much debt somewhere else and they have to start using their card, or they're, I don't know, they lost their job, their car broke down, you're basically right there just in the background, just waving, smiling awkwardly, and you're just like, please stop using your card because it's negatively affecting my score as well. The day that we sign up and say that we best friends, that means that my bullshit is your bullshit. Everyone's financial standings change year to year. Someone could lose their job, anything could happen, you never know. So taking a step away from the pros and cons, I'm gonna talk about one thing that you should know before thinking or even applying to become an authorized user on someone else's account or talking to any friends or family, and this is serious. The whole point of becoming an authorized user on someone else's account is so that you can basically ride along with them, 
you over there just riding along and shooting up your score to all three credit bureaus. If it's not being reported out to all three credit bureaus, there's literally no point of doing this. I'm gonna leave a link in the description that shows the certain cards that do report out to all three credit bureaus. That way, when you go ask someone else to be a uh, authorized user on their account, you gotta ask them what card are you using, what financial institution are you using, because maybe a Capital One card is going to report out to all three credit bureaus, but maybe the Bank of America card isn't. So just like I talked about in my other videos, another pro of being an authorized user is that it's going to report out to the credit bureaus, obviously to increase your score, but it's gonna be another trade line out there that you can use as experience. And what I mean by trade line is it's just gonna be another mix of good positive credit reporting that's gonna be reported out to the all three credit bureaus. So it's gonna be another line reported out to the credit bureaus. CB stands for credit bureaus. On top of that, as long as your friend or family, whoever you apply to be an authorized user for, keeps their utilization rate low, it's actually gonna positively increase your credit score because now you're gonna have a very low utilization rate being reported out to the credit bureaus because the credit bureaus, especially if you have a lot of other debt that's maxed out, maybe some other maxed out cars out there, are just gonna show more available credit out there which will lower your overall utilization rate. Let's just say they have a $2,000 limit, 2K limit, and let's just say every single month they're only using $30 of that. Well, that's another $1,970 that you can have reported out there as available credit. So it increases your available credit. And if you're in someone in the shoes of having a lot of maxed out debt and you just want a way to increase your score pretty fast, I mean, I'm talking 30 days as soon as it gets reported out there and you become an authorized user, then you can take your available credit from basically zero if you have all of your uh, credit cards maxed out to 2,000. And that will positively affect your credit because the credit bureaus are gonna look at your report and be like, holy crap, he has more utilization than last month. And lastly, one of the basic tips of being an authorized user is it's gonna be reported out monthly, just like we talk about in all my credit repair video. Everything that is on your profile, linked to your social, is gonna be reported out monthly and judged by the credit bureaus. We'll throw that in the pro category because it's probably supposedly gonna be a pro. So there you go, reported out to credit bureaus. Now, my personal opinion of being an authorized user, Honestly, there's no point. There truly is no point. I mean, the biggest con, and I know you see probably more pros over here than you do cons, but the biggest con right here that we have is that it doesn't carry as much weight. And the whole point of my credit repair videos is for you to go out there and increase your score. And how do you do that? By getting your own trusted, established trade lines out there that report out positively every single month that have low credit to increase your low utilization rate, to increase your available credit, that have another line reported out that can ultimately increase your score. And if you can't do that on your own, there's no point of being an authorized user. And on top of that, I know this is some gray area, but in my opinion, your credit, your finances should stay within yourself. But my whole theory is if you can't get approved for anything else out there, you need to change the way you're spending, increase your income, do something with your debt to move it around, or watch some of my other videos, maybe on some balance transfer stuff, to be able to get rid of this. Or maybe you just simply need time to increase your credit score and pay down some of your balances. Being an authorized user is not really gonna carry too much weight in the scheme of things compared to the other credit hack reviews that I've done, the balance transfer hack that I talked about, or even the secured line or loan uh, uh, that would increase your credit score would have more weight and mainly because of this column right here. It doesn't carry as much weight and what I mean by that is let's just say you got two cards. Let's say you're a co-signer in this card and you're an authorized user on this card. A co-signer with positive credit history, let's just say it's a 2000 limit and they're only util utilizing like $50 a month on it and just paying it back. The co-signer is going to increase much faster than the authorized user because the credit bureaus reflect that you're actually legally responsible for that debt versus an authorized user who are not legally responsible for the debt. And on top of that, how awkward would it be to go to your friends or family and tell them, hey, look, I got bad credit. Let me use some of your good credit habits to increase my bad credit. It just, I mean, in my opinion, this is some gray area. In my opinion, it just, it's an awkward conversation you may not want to have in the first place. So in my opinion, stay away from it. There's so many other credit hacks that we're going to be going through on this channel. They're going to increase your credit score way more than just being an authorized user. But here's kind of an overview 
of what it is, what it can do for you. So anyway, that's a review of being an authorized user. I'm gonna erase this whiteboard and get back to you with being a co-signer. Let's compare the two. All right, so I'm back. Let's go through it if you're a co-signer. Then let's talk about the pros and cons really quick. I got my marker and my eraser. So first things first, there still is a relationship. Let's just say friends, family, or you. Um, it, it, there's still a relationship. The debt is still surrounded by one card. But the main difference between being a co-signer and authorized user is that you are legally responsible for the debt. So we can cross that out right there. So if you're a co-signer, you have everything that you have access to being an authorized user and you are responsible for the debt. And on top of that, one of the cons we're going to erase over here because you can make changes to your credit profile. So you can ask for credit increases out of the blue. You can change your address. You can do things like that. Another con we're going to erase right here of being a cosigner is that it doesn't carry much weight. It does carry the same exact weight as if you were on your own credit card. It's the same exact whole thing. The credit bureaus don't look at cosigners any different than they do as if you're on your credit card yourself. Why would someone do a cosign? There's really no point. I mean, you can use two people's income to get approved for a larger line of credit maybe, but that's really the only reason. I mean, other than that, if you can get approved in your own for your own credit card, there's really no point of being a cosigner unless you just want to have that relationship. Maybe you're in a husband-wife situation. Uh, that would make sense to be a cosigner because you want both parties to be responsible for the debt. But other than that, to be honest with you, I am a firm believer in just keeping all your debt separate. There's no point of combining it with someone else, especially if you can already get approved. And by the way, if you can't get approved for a credit card, don't have someone cosign with you just for that point. Because now you're dragging them into your financial BS. The day that we sign up and say that we best friends, that means that my bullshit it's your bullshit. Which makes absolutely no sense and it's not the right move because if you watch some of my other videos, um, I can teach you how and when to apply for what certain cards that will get you approved so that you don't have to drag anyone else into your financial. Uh, now, one of the cons, now that we're going to erase some cons, we're going to add some, of being a co-signer is that you are responsible for the debt, which is huge. So now you're responsible. So in the same way of an authorized user, which actually I should add that to my authorized user section, if that person misses a payment, your friend or family, or maybe you forget a payment, it's going to negatively report out to the credit bureaus, which is a bad thing. So that's one con right there. Now switching over to the pro side, grab my eraser right here, switching over to the pro side, it can increase your score in the same exact way. It still does add another reporting line out to the credit bureaus. It still has more available credit. It adds more available credit if you use it wisely and it reports out to the credit bureau monthly. I don't know why I didn't add monthly in there. So all of this is still the same. Now the whole point of me making these videos is to highlight one word in this entire, entire video. If you're not gonna take away anything, take away this. All of this can, keyword can, help you right here. If you use it wisely. Now this video is too long, so we're not gonna be going over pretty much the whole aspects of how to do this because I have a ton of other videos on that in the Credit Hack Review series on how to have all three of these four done correctly to increase your score the fastest and most efficient way possible. But the keyword is can. I don't want you to think like, oh, I'm in a bad credit situation. Maybe I just filed bankruptcy. Maybe I just got a repo, a foreclosure. So let me just automatically just become an authorized user or a cosigner on someone's card to have it reported out positively. There's so many other ways without dragging other people into your financial realm. So all four of these things can happen. But again, don't think like you have to do that. It's not really required. There's a lot of stuff in being an authorized user or co-signer that I have a huge bias on, as you can tell. However, there's no right or wrong choice. You can ultimately do whatever you want. This was just a firm review of some facts of what an authorized user or co-signer is and how you can use it to increase your credit score because that's what we talk about on Ask Austin Harley. As always, if you watch till the end or if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel as I'm trying to put out more content to help you increase your credit score and increase your finances overall. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And on top of that, use your credit wisely. All right, guys, I'm out.